Hello, my name is Dana Borkum. I'm from McLean Hospital. I work in the Laboratory for the Study of Adult Development with Dr. Mary Zanarini. Um, and today, I'm not necessarily going to be talking about treatment, but rather protective factors of three different groups that we looked at. So that'll be um, adolescents with BPD, psychiatrically healthy adolescents, and adults with BPD. Um, okay, so background on this. Um, so little research has been done on protective factors in borderline personality disorder, particularly with adolescents. Um, most uh, studies of this kind have looked at um, risk factors rather than protective factors. Um, one study by Skodal et al. in 2007 um, looked at an adult group and found that positive childhood experiences were found to relate to symptomatic remission in schizotypal and avoidant personality disorder, but not borderline personality disorder. And a study by Paris et al., uh, looking at 12 pairs of sisters, one with BPD and one without, found that the um, sisters with BPD had far less protective factors than the sisters uh, without BPD. Um, so these were individual characteristics, emotion regulatory skills, um, peer and social support, and things of that nature. So the aims of this study were to identify the prevalence rates of childhood protective factors endorsed by adolescents with BPD compared to the psychiatrically healthy adolescents, and Secondly, to compare the prevalence rates of childhood protective factors endorsed by adolescents with BPD and adults with BPD. So um, we're addressing two major issues in clinical care uh, regarding BPD. The first is many clinicians believe that BPD traits in adolescents are minor deviations from what tend to be a difficult time developmentally. Um, so this study addresses this issue by uh, comparing protective factors reported by rigorously diagnosed adolescents with BPD to psychiatrically healthy adolescents. And then we are also looking at um, two uh, groups of BPD, one the adult group and the adolescent group, to kind of demonstrate that these are very similar groups diagnostically. Um, so the adults with BPD are a part of our um, McLean study of adult development. So they were... Um, Recruited between 1992 and 1995, uh, they were between the ages of 18 to 35 and had to fit the following criteria. And they were given three semi-structured diagnostic interviews to determine their diagnosis. The um, structured clinical interview for Axis I disorders, the revised diagnostic interview for borderlines, and the diagnostic interview for DSM-3R personality disorders. The adolescents were recruited um, many years later, uh, from 2007 to 2012. Um, they were recruited from four units at McLean and one unit at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And they were given the child versions of the same measures. And the psychiatrically healthy adolescents um, were age-matched peers to the adolescents with BPD group. Um, they were mostly recruited uh, via Craigslist and um, had to not have met any, um, any criteria for any psychiatric disorder. So these were the protective experiences that we looked at. They were broken into three categories, positive relationships, achievement, and parental uh, protective factors, so sort of parental competence, if you will. Um, so these included relationship with parents, relationship with other adult relatives, relationship with siblings, relationship with friends. In the achievement category, academic, athletic, leadership, work, hobbies, household responsibilities, popularity, and other extracurricular activities. The parental and uh, the pr parental protective factors included having an active social life, other interests such as hobbies, um, work competence, relationships, good relationships with their family of origin, and their own close friendships. 
So when the adolescents with BPD were compared to the psychiatrically healthy adolescents, psychiatrically healthy adolescents were more likely to report playing a sport well, participate in a leadership role, participate in household responsibilities, and have a parent who has leisure time activities. When looking uh, between the two BPD groups, um, adolescents were more likely to report good academic performance, participation in household responsibilities. So this included like things that one enjoys and one is good at. This could include like cleaning, cleaning their room, making lunch for their siblings or themselves, um, kind of just being involved in household function. Um, they were more likely to report participating in extracurricular activities, report having a positive relationship with parents, and report having parents who have positive relationships with their family of origin. Um, the adolescents with BPD were more likely to report a good work performance outside of the home. And that um, is something that would have been age appropriate at that time. So babysitting, uh, part-time job. And it's important to note that um, seeing that the adults were older, they were reporting retrospectively on their adolescence. So um, as we might have predicted, the psychiatrically healthy adolescents reported more protective experiences than the adolescents with BPD. Um, and we know that you know the extracurriculars, sports, these things serve as a protective nature for kind of building relationships, they assist in uh, better school functioning. Um, participation in household responsibilities may underscore the importance of just being involved in the home, having chores, having parents who are kind of working with the children to kind of maybe give them an allowance for the chores that they complete at home. Um, and parents who are involved in hobbies, which was an interesting one, um, that may serve as a positive, they may serve as a positive role model for their kids, just kind of demonstrating that they have structured activity outside of the home and work. So there were a number of differences between the two groups, and our group spent a lot of time thinking about why this might be, given that they you know, met the same exact criteria for borderline personality disorder. Um, so we were thinking that it was really mostly related to a cohort, cohort difference and basically the nature of the difference of 20 years between when they were interviewed and what their adolescent experience might have been like given this difference in time that they were being interviewed. Um, so adolescents with BPD may have received more support around school and extracurricular activities, may have been kind of more encouraged by parents to participate in these, and um, just by nature of, of um, more support as far as mental illness services in schools and more awareness around this. That could have played a role in why adolescents were um, reporting doing better in these areas. Um, whereas adults with BPD may have been encouraged to uh, hold a part-time job by their parents instead of participating in extracurricular activities. And um, this is kind of the big one that stood out most. Um, adults reporting retrospectively about their childhood um, may have underreported their achievements. Um, this could be due to forgetting, feeling so demoralized by their current situation that they were unable to acknowledge positive attributes about their, themselves or the past. And previous research has suggested that those with BPD may demonstrate negatively bias, biased recall when reporting on childhood experiences. As far as relationships, Adolescents with BPD were more likely to report positive relationships with their parents and parents who have positive relationships with their family of origin as well. Um, so this was also very interesting. And again, our, our group took, um, took a lot of time in processing why this might be. And um, we were really speculating that just the increase in knowledge over the 20 years that uh, in the difference of the two groups, just the knowledge, psychoeducation, and, and more evidence-based treatments available for those with BPD now 
adolescents with BPD in particular, may have uh, allowed parents to be more effective in their relationships with their sensitive children by nature of the treatments that are available um, and just all the information that is out there now um, and just the nature of including parents in treatment for this diagnosis and vice versa. Um, adolescents who are getting more information about what is actually going on may allow them to be more effective in their relationships with their parents. And um, finally, adolescents who have exposure to um, role models who are close and have good relationships, um, particularly with their parents who are close with their parents, it might just be kind of a, a positive trickle-down effect. Um, so before I go into limitations, it is worth noting that um, despite the, some of the differences between the groups that we saw, there were actually more similarities than differences. Um, so um, for example, there were no differences in the prevalence of positive relationships or uh, parental, social, and work competence between the adolescent adolescents with BPD and psychiatrically healthy adolescents. And likewise, the adolescents with BPD had more similarities than differences when compared to the adult BPD group, um, particularly regard, in regards to the positive relationships and parental competence. Some limitations were that um, the adolescents and adults with BPD were inpatients at the time of study entry, so were pretty, um, had pretty severe cases at, at the time that they were being interviewed, so the rates of protective factors might be higher for those um, who have never been hospitalized or are in an outpatient type setting. And um, the reports by all three groups may have been subject to bias and recall, whether exaggerating or minimizing their treatment, their achievements. So in summary, um, the results of this study suggest that adolescents meeting criteria for BPD have fewer protective factors than psychiatrically healthy adolescents. And the results also suggest that adolescents with BPD have significantly more protective factors than adults with BPD. Thank you.